Uh, welcome to everybody. It's good to see everybody. Kind of uh, very enjoyable to be here. I also have kudos for the team that put this together. I've built, I've done events, maybe not as big as this. And when you pull them off, it looks really easy. Like, you know, piece of cake. It just worked fine. They are really hard. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work to pull something like this off with a pretty small team. So just kudos to, to everyone that's been involved. So what I'm going to do, I don't know, can we go into, into presentation mode? Oh, we're working on it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, about leadership and how to apply leadership to the kind of philanthropic charitable activities and a specific program at Touch of Life. And so one of the advantages of being first is I also get to talk a little bit about um, what Touch of Life is. So you might think, well, it's a 5013C, it's a charity, it's, you know, it initiates charitable activity, it, uh, it actually engages in a very direct way. But actually, in some ways, not that that's not important, obviously, um, it's a really innovative idea, kind of coming out of Silicon Valley and, and Sai and his team and, and Tej. Um, but the idea is kind of simple in a way. If you think about the commercial marketplaces that have been built really effectively, Amazon, Alibaba, et cetera, the connection between needs and resources like Uber, why in the world couldn't we do that for giving and for kindness and for charity? Why can't we create a fundamental marketplace that connects needs to resources? And that's fundamentally the idea. Sounds easy, a lot of work to be done to make that happen, but I think really innovative and gives you the ability to scale beyond what you could do as a specific aligned charity. Again, not that, that's not really important. Uh, you know, there's probably two, 300,000 small charities, maybe more, in the United States um, that are doing amazingly good things, but they just don't have the resources. They can't scale. They don't have organizational skills. They don't have leadership skills. They find fundraising difficult. They have no brand. They can't make the brand available. So the idea is for Tau to be the source of those resources to be the connection between the needs and the resources, to be kind of the go-to resource pool for, as a charity, if you're a charity in the, in the room running a charity, that you can come and get help. And that'll take a number of different forms, but that's the idea. Pretty straightforward, really. But uh, in a very innovative idea, I think it's quite unusual. I haven't found anywhere uh, else, I'm, there may be elsewhere in the world, but I haven't found anywhere else that has this idea and is actually implementing it. So. So um, a little bit about, uh, so with that as kind of the background, what are the things that Tal can do? And I'm gonna talk about one in a lot more detail. But things like, you know, operational skills. And I talk to small charities. I don't, you know, I don't know how to even make a website. What do I do? Where do I go? I don't know how to manage funds. I don't know. So there's this very fundamental set of organizational and operational skills that we can bring to the table. Kind of, um, very scalable applications, things that don't require people to create scale, at least people in the middle to create scale. So if you think about Uber, Uber doesn't need to be huge in and of itself to connect the endpoints. And so the whole set of applications and kind of tools are being built to be able to do that. Um, I'll mention one other and then I'll get into mine, and that is uh, the, the engagement of youth. And one of the things that I think um, I think on this slide, I said things like internships and volunteering, you know, volunteering, and that's, that's cool. But I think the real power of getting young people engaged is it gives whole new ideas on how to solve problems. Very different ways of thinking than, than an older generation. And a lot of energy and excitement about getting it done. I think that's incredibly powerful. And I think Vino will probably talk a little bit more about that. So. The specific topic I'm going to talk about is how do you engage leadership? You know, how do you get a group of really talented people that want to help and connect them to the needs? So if you're a charity and you say, gosh, you know, I have a need for like a board member, maybe all you know is friends and family. I mean, you have a, kind of a community of people that you know, but there's no ability to connect broadly with a, a bigger group and a bigger resource pool. So Tal Leaders is kind of the idea behind that. Can we create 
but a very coherent, very focused, broad leadership group, and then connect it to the needs in a very kind of coherent, repeatable, scalable type fashion. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. I thought I would have a little bit of fun, uh, and um, um, it'll be an interesting group here. Um, but, uh, but here's six people, six pictures. I don't know if you can all see the six pictures. I'm curious, how many of you think you know who all six are and what they did, the impact that they had? Does anybody know all six? How about if anybody that knows three of them? Okay, so maybe at least half of you for three. So let's kind of go through the bidding. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she was a U.S. Supreme Court justice from 1993. She joined at 60 years of age, and she left the bench when she passed away in 2020 at the age of 87. Really made an amazing impact on the constitutional rights of women, of underserved groups, of people that, you know, I'll call them regular citizens that maybe are not well served. Big impact in terms of constitutional rights. This is probably one that not many of you knew who the heck this person was. Or did, well, you did, our UK friend here knows. <laughs> so this is Sir Alexander Fleming. He discovered penicillin in 1928. So think about that. Before that point in time, you get a cut in your arm, you might die. <laughs> there is no antibiotic before that time. Changed the world in terms of the ability to deliver medical procedures, longevity, quality of life, et cetera. Golda Meir, she was the first prime minister, first female prime minister of Israel. She took that role at the age of 72. She was the first leader in all of the Middle East, female leader. And then this one I suspect most everybody knew, Nelson Mandela, the first president of South Africa, spent a lot of his adult life in, in prison, made a huge impact on the end of apartheid, and really bringing a lot of knowledge to the repression and oppression of, from a racial standpoint at a worldwide level. And this guy, um, Sir Winston Churchill, most of you probably knew him too, certainly my UK friend probably did. He was a, appointed the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in World War II at the age of 66. And I can tell you, he was a driving force behind the Allies' win over the Axis powers. And then lastly, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, whose nonviolent technique ultimately resulted in the independence of, of India uh, from the, the uh, uh, British rule in 1947. So you might be saying, fun quiz, kind of interesting, whatever. What in the heck does this have to do with touch of life? And maybe I'm, I'm hoping I'll draw some conclusion here to that. But all of these people changed the world. I mean, they changed the world, and they all did it certainly in the second half of their lives. There's a tremendous opportunity of a pool of resource, and I'll also talk about people that aren't in the second half of their life and their impact, certainly, but a tremendous opportunity for people that have time and the willingness to give to make a big difference in the world and make a difference in the context of uh, Touch of Life. So think about it if you're a charity and you can have access to those folks that I just had up there and another hundred or thousand like them and you could call on them at any point. Think about if you could pick up the phone and call Winston Churchill and say, you know, hey, Winnie. You know, I used to always call him Winnie. I'm, an, I'm kind of old, so I have to call him Winnie. Um, I've got a problem. I have something I need help with. And he actually answered the phone. He, and he answered the phone because you knew he was going to answer the phone. You were connected to him. He knew what you were doing. And, and the, the power that that individual had, his connections and capability, was to put to work for you. So it's a really fundamental resource that can make a big difference uh, in a number of small charities. Now, uh, what I don't want to do is leave you with any kind of an opinion that all of the Tau leaders are retired. In fact, I would say most are not. Most are deep into very, very challenging and successful careers. They're working a lot of hours. They're very focused on what they do, but they fundamentally want to help. And uh, so we certainly don't have any children in the group, all of them. That may be a future <laughs> thing that we try to do. But we have a lot of a breadth of individuals and capabilities, et cetera. So now um, uh, what they all have, though, is amazing careers. And not just in business, there are people that are current Tau leaders who are on their third or fourth startup, successful startup, with exits. 
and very successful access. We have people that are working at the top of the healthcare industry at some of the most renowned uh, institutions, both educational and, and practicing institutions in the world. We have educators uh, that are at the top of the educational pyramid and doing very fundamental research that applies to philanthropic activity. So this is a group that is involved in government at the highest levels, business at the highest levels, and the one thing about them all is they want to help. And they want to help in a very direct way, and it's not a commercial thing. They're not hanging out in the back of the room thinking, oh, this is a great consulting opportunity. This is engaging with charities around activities that make a difference and helping in the ability to do that. So let's, you know, these are kind of a list of some things, mentoring and board roles, but if I also play a little game, and I have no idea in the room who does what necessarily, but let's say over at this table, you're running a charity. And you've been pretty successful so far. You've kind of built up um, some capabilities. You've got a collaboration and some partnerships, et cetera. Uh, but you have a real interesting decision to make, and that is whether to build some infrastructure, maybe a building, maybe a particular location, maybe, I don't know, a, a healthcare center. And so there's a real interesting question. Do I go out and raise capital, expend capital, build the resource with all of the associated implications of that or not? So talking to somebody that's done that before and done it multiple times before could be really helpful to you, not only in how to do it, but certainly how not to do it as well. So that would be kind of an example. Maybe over here you're running a charity and you're really frustrated because you just have no brand. No one's aware of what you're doing. You find fundraising really difficult. Would it be nice to talk to somebody who is a world-class marketeer, who's built a brand and business successfully multiple times, has successfully kind of crossed that path? That's what this leadership role is kind of about, the ability to kind of grab those kinds of skills and execute them um, to make your life as a charity easier. The other thing I should have mentioned at the very beginning is, if you think about it, if you thought about this as a commercial endeavor, then the charities are the customers of Touch of Life. And also the, the contributors and uh, uh, those that are providing funds and skills are also a customer, but the primary customer is the charity. Make the charity better at what they do. Make their life easier, more efficient, and more effective. And that's what this is really all about. Um, so how the heck would you do that? So the first thing you gotta do is have a set of leaders, right? You gotta have people that agree that they're gonna go do that. So we've reached out, I can't take a lot of credit for it, it's really been the people who started Touch of Life, reached out to a lot of acquaintances and kind of worked the network, et cetera, and have built about 100 leaders roughly worldwide. Uh, and I can tell you, having come into this just a few months ago, these are really impressive people. I mean, they have worked at the top of government. They are um, just, inc I could go on and on, but it's an incredible pool of people. Um, but, but, but then how do you make the connection? And that's in part what Tal's about, is making this kind of conduit between the resources and the need. So like the fundraising raising activities, kind of crowdfunding application and the radio uh, capability, which you'll hear more about later today, um, there's an application being built It'll be probably in like alpha testing, I'd say in the next couple of weeks. I'll look to sigh every time I talk about timing for applications. But it's getting pretty close. And the idea is a pretty simple idea that does scale. And that is how do you make the connection? So the leader will be able to go into this application and say, here's the area I'm interested in. Here's my, how much time I've got to contribute to it. Here's maybe the geography I want to work in. Here's the impact I want to have. And now you've got a database of, of people that are here to help, have tremendous capability, and you know what they want to do to help. Now, the charity can go into that same application and go, I had a real problem with marketing and my brand and awareness, so I'm going to go into that database and find leaders that want to get engaged in that kind of activity, have that skill set, and can help. So it's a more complicated than even an Uber, right? The Uber's like, I, I want to ride, here's a car, the car's got a person in it, they're closed, boom, we're done. This is a broad connection, really powerful, I think, over time. So that's kind of the, the way to make the connection. Uh, the other thing that you could, and again, there's nothing wrong with this, but I'll just mention this. 
you can think there's a bunch of people that are kind of sitting around, they're in this database, they're a leader, and they want to do some good things. Wonderful. That's a wonderful kind of a outcome, emotional outcome. They want to make an impact. That's a great impact. But you could, it's not just purely a one-sided thing. I can tell you personally that not only can the leader bring capability and benefit to the charity, but working with people that are very focused, that have energy, they're aligned to getting something done, and they want to make the world a better place is incredibly energizing. This is absolutely synergistic for all the parties. Everybody wins from this. So this is a, kind of from a psychological standpoint, emotional standpoint, this is a really a, a very kind of connected kind of capability. Now, one of the things we're going to want to do is expand the number of leaders that we have, expand the demographic, expand the geographic mix, kind of get more and more skills, et cetera. So that certainly is on the plate, you know, that we're going to work really hard at that. Um, but at some point in time, right now, if you think about it, what we're doing is kind of facilitating this one-to-one -one linkage. Uh, the other thing I should have mentioned on that one-to-one -one linkage through the app is once Tal makes that, that, that conduit intersection between the leader and the need, the rest is up to them. So the leader gets to decide and the charity gets to decide, is this a good match? Are we going to be able to help each other? Is it something that makes sense? And it doesn't have to close. But at that point, it's your call as the leader and your call as the charity once that that is made. Now, we may also start to, in the future, think about aligning multiple leaders to and multiple charities, potentially, into coalitions focused at bigger kinds of activities. So maybe we find there's 20 leaders that want to work on hunger or on uh, elementary education, or on affordable housing, et cetera. So a lot of challenges in the world is identified by these initiatives. And at some point, we may be able to actually facilitate aggregations and coalitions to get bigger and bigger things done. We're going to start with the one-to-one -one connectivity. You know, this is like a startup. You can't like solve everything at once. You need to get focused, and you need to go. Um, so I've got two things that I want some help with. And as we make a video, we'll get even a broader audience to help. So like a startup, you can't do everything. You know, the objective of everything we're doing in Touch Alive is to make the charities more effective, more efficient, and give them the ability to scale. That's what we're trying to do. So we have to hit the mark. We have to focus on what makes the biggest impact. And on Tau Leaders and all the other, other initiatives, uh, we need input. So again, this is like a startup. We have a product. We, we want to make the product market fit really good. We want to make it impactful and be able to grow. So I'm going to ask for some help from everybody in the audience here and this whole kind of initiative to give us input. What if you're a charity? What would make a difference for you? How would you use a leader kind of portfolio? What are the specific things that are in your way that could be taken out of your way to allow growth and success? Um, so that's one. And then if you're a leader in the group, and there's a number of people in the group that are going to speak that I can tell you talking to them before uh, I stepped up here, there's certainly leaders, and you'd like to get involved with this, it may only be two hours a week or two hours a month, but it could make a big impact. Let me know that. And again, this is services at no charge. This is connections between people to get something done and make a difference in the world. So that's my last ask, those two things. <laughs> call to action. Really look forward to the rest of the event. I hope to meet many of you. I've already met a few of you, certainly. This is a whole new world for me. I've spent my entire career in commercial, and your success is in a P&L. Really simple. Don't burn the balance sheet. Make more money. Piece of kid. Now, there's more to life than that, obviously, ESG, but it's a really interesting, easy scorecard. It's like going to school. You get an A, a B, a C. This is a new world for me, certainly. So I look forward to learning a lot from all of you. And uh, making an impact, so thanks very much.